Welcome to No BS TS episode one, where I take a look at everyday types and get you started on your journey to understanding TypeScript. Now, this whole series is about giving you five to 15 minute intros that you can take at your own speed to learn TypeScript, particularly from a JavaScript background. And the first thing you might want to know about TypeScript is why you'd want to use it. Well, there's two big primary reasons that you'd want to use TypeScript. And the first is it's going to save your bacon. If you've had issues where you try to call something off of a null or an undefined value, it's going to help you there. If you've called the functions without the right parameters, it's going to help you there. If you don't know the fields or you've put the wrong fields or type in the wrong field names into objects, it's going to help you there. We're going to see a lot of that stuff today. Secondarily, it's going to help you code faster. You're going to be able to know right away what the right fields are and know if you're missing fields right away. So it's going to help with both of those things. I can't wait to get you into it. Let's check it out right now. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a directory called TS Basics and then bring that up in VS Code. OK, now let's start out with JavaScript since it's something that we're all familiar with. And I'll create a file called basics.js. And in that, I'm going to go and create two variables. The first one is a string. And the second one is a Boolean. Now I'm going to make a bug. And I'm going to go and add to has logged in my last name. And of course, I want to debug that bug. So let's do a console log and see what I get. All right, let's go and bring up our terminal and run node on this. And we can see that now we've got a true, which is what happened. And we can see that now we have true space Harrington. So node has gone and coerced our Boolean to a string so that we can add a string to it, which is not really what we wanted because true Harrington really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So can TypeScript help us find this bug? And of course, how do we get started with TypeScript? Well, I'm going to go and create a project here. I'm going to use yarn in it for that. And that's going to create a package.json. And then into that package, I'm going to add TypeScript in development mode. That's going to add the TypeScript compiler. And then I'm going to add TS node, also in development mode. And that's a wrapper around node that works for TypeScript files. And then finally, I'm going to go in and initialize a TypeScript configuration file, or tsconfig. And the way to do that is to do mpx, and then tsc, which is the name of the TypeScript compiler, and then dash dash init. Now, despite being in the red, this file is actually good. It's got the strict typing that we want. The reason it's going red right now is that it's telling us that there are no TS files around. So there's no inputs. So we'll fix that in a bit. In the meantime, let us try and use TS node on our JavaScript and see if that helps us at all. So it's giving us exactly the same output as before, which is great. It does mean that we can actually run our JavaScript in TS node, that's fine, but it's not really helping us at all. So let's go and change basics.js to basics.ts to convert it to a TypeScript file. And already it's telling us what the issue is. Has logged in is an issue. In fact, we can see over here the type string is not assignable to a type Boolean. And if we want to run this, we will get exactly that type of output telling us that one, I'm not going to run it, and two, you've got a problem. So I'll scroll back up here, and we can see that it's telling us exactly the same thing. The type of string is not assignable to a type of Boolean. And now that problem with the TS config has gone away because we have a TS file, we've got our inputs. So how does TypeScript know that this is going to be a problem? Well, it's inferred from true that has logged in as of type Boolean. Now, how do I know that? It's because I can do command K, command I, when I have this selected, and it'll show me that it has defined has logged in as a Boolean. And I know that because it's got that colon, and then it's followed by Boolean, which is the type. And that's exactly how you specify a type for a value in TypeScript, is you do colon, 
and then the type name. So I'm going to copy and paste that into here. And this is really neat because this actually kind of allows you to let VS Code do a lot of the typing for you. You just do Command-K, Command-I on whatever you see, and it'll pretty much tell you what the types are and give you the syntax, which is super cool. If I go over here, I can do Command-K, Command-I, and see that this is a string. So I can just set that to string. And I can fix my bug, and away I go. All right, what are some other types? Well, there is a number. And that's any number. There's also more complex types, for example, like a regex. How we do a regex in TypeScript? Well, let's go make one of those. And then when we do Command K, Command I on that, we can see that it's a regex, and that's a built in type. So now that we've looked at some of the basic types, let's talk about arrays. So let's go and split this guy, my username. And this is an example of it doing that great hinting for you on space. And now what's that going to output? Well, that's a great thing I can do. I can do const names equals, and then I can do command K, command I, and I can see that it's telling me that it's an array of names. And how do I know that? Well, it's got the open and close brackets which is the same thing you'd use to dereference array to basically tell you that this is an array. So that's great. Now there's also another way to do arrays and that's to use the generic type. So let me show you that. Specify array and then you use less than and greater than. And then in between the less than and greater than you give the type that you want. So let's just make an array of numbers. And then in here, as I'm typing, if I put in something that's not a number, I'm going to get a warning. It's going to tell me that this string is not assignable to a type of number. Totally true. So let's go and put in some numbers. And now it's fine. But now let's go and add a string on it. And again, I'm going to get that error. And if you're like, wait a second, hold up, hold up. I actually have an API where I want to return an array that's got three numbers and a string. Can I still do that in TypeScript? You definitely can. There is a mechanism called a tuple, and we'll cover that in this video series. I've never seen a case where TypeScript has forbid me from making the API that I want to make. Right? It always helps me enforce that and hint that to other developers, but it never holds me back. So it can do what you want to do, but in this case, we just want it to be an array of numbers. So there you go. All right, well, let's talk about objects since they're really important. Let's create a person object. And we'll have a first and last name. So how do I define that? Well, again, I'm going to use my command K, command I trick. And look at that. It's going to tell me that what I need to do is do colon and then open curly braces and then first and last and close curly braces. Isn't that great? That's so cool. So now that I define this object is only having a first and last string, if I were to go in and ask it to go and add in a new field, let's say cool, and I'll set that to true and say that I'm cool, TypeScript will tell me, no, you're not cool because cool actually doesn't exist on this person, which is defined as having just first and last on it. But again, if you're like, whoa, wait a second, I want to add cool, totally, you can do that. You just set it as a Boolean. Or you can set it as an optional field. You can do anything you want in TypeScript. It's just going to help you as you define these, these interfaces as strictly or as loosely as you want. So let's talk a little bit about this type definition. This seems like something that you don't want to go and copy and paste all over the place. So you want to be able to say define it once and then when you make changes to it, it'll change everywhere. So how do you define it once and then reuse it? Well, you use the interface keyword and then you give the interface name. So let's make it person and you just paste in what you want your type definition to be. So in this case, you just reuse it like that, just like person. And again, you get this great hinting. So check this out, my person dot, and it'll tell you here are the fields that are available to you based on that interface. It's just so great. Now, another thing we do a lot of is we use objects as maps in JavaScript. So let's see a little bit about how to do that. So I'm going to create a map of IDs and then say that 10 is A and say 20 is B. And so how do we type that? Because what I really want to be able to do is do IDs 30 is C, but what it's already telling me that I can't do that because it actually inferred 
that the type here is 10 as a string, 20 as a string. So when I ask for 30, it's like, no, 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 I can't have that. So how do I allow myself to have that? Well, what I'm going to use is a utility type, and this one is called record. And with record, I can define the key type and the value type. So in this case, the key type is a number and the value type is a string, but they can be whatever you want them to be. And so now we're fine. We're good. We have our key lookup and that's great. So you might be asking yourself, well, how does TypeScript work with things like conditionals? Is that the same? It absolutely is. So in this case, it's going to go and do a string comparison and knows that's going to work because it knows that IDs 30 is a string. You could actually even get checked here. So if we do 20, it's going to tell me that's wrong because you're comparing a string to a number. So that's really nice and helpful. But it's not going to change the way that you do things like conditionals. It's only going to change when you're doing variable declarations. And the only other places are, are things like loops. So for example, uh, a for loop. In this case, the value of i is inferred to be a number. Now, you don't really need to go and specify that. You can if you want to, but you really should let TypeScript infer as much as possible. So you really, yeah, I would leave it just like that because it's inferred. It's fine. And the other one would be things like for each and map. So let's try those out. And in this case, again, it knows that the input type is an array of numbers. And so the parameter to for each is going to be of a type of number. Now, if you were to go over a bunch of person records, they would show up as persons. So that's great. And how does it work for map? Similar sort of thing. So in this case, I'm just multiplying V by 10. And let's go and get the output of that. And TypeScript is smart enough to infer that given the fact that V is a number and V times 10 is going to result in a number, then out is going to be an array of numbers. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now if I were to go in here and change this into a string template, you see that it would change its inference to be an output of strings. But if I were to go and specify this as a numeric array, now it's giving me an error. Now it's telling me that the output of this function isn't mapping directly to what I have on the type of that array. So then I can, again, you know, fix it by taking out that string template. Super easy. All right, well, in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to define your types around functions. But of course, in the meantime, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click the bell button and you'll be notified the next time another one of these videos comes out.